Right now, there are 5.4 million Americans living with Alzheimer's disease. There is no cure. Today's medicines can't slow its progress, and future cases can't be prevented. As the population ages, the number of people with the disease is expected to triple. Even these startling numbers don't begin to measure the magnitude of the crisis, because behind every Alzheimer's patient are families whose lives are torn apart by the challenges of providing care. This story is about those people and an innovative community-based program called Memory Matters in Hilton Head, South Carolina, that is providing a glimmer of hope and a replicable model that just might work in your hometown. Back in 1997, there was a small group of people that recognized that there were people in their parish that were really struggling with the caring of their persons with Alzheimer's. And it inspired them to really put something in place to help these families. In the morning, and I'm putting myself on morning, for waking up in an unknown Place with the recollection you have erased. I saw an ad in the paper for Memory Matters and I thought maybe that would help Benny. Never thinking it would help me also. Alzheimer's has an impact on families in general that is huge, but on the caregivers more specifically because their life is entirely engaged in making sure that that person is safe and cared for. And there is no vacation from that. How's it taste, buddy? Is it pretty good? Well, we have different things. Well, we do have different things, Vinny. They're your pills. It's the they keep us going thing. each day. This was. Yes. Some kids. That was some kids? I think of kids. You know, talking at night, you have to bring out some and something like that. Okay, that's for that pill. Okay. I think that Alzheimer's is the most feared disease of the 21st century. It started as a one day a week, half day respite program for caregivers, and with the idea that we would take care of their loved ones and give the caregiver a much needed break from that 24-hour uh, day care. Over time, they added a day here and there until finally it was up to five days a week. Thank you for being here today, and you're going to join me for Acting 101. Acting 101. In this room is our daycare program. It's a social model program where we care for the folks with Alzheimer's and any kind of dementia. We're all, that's not it, that's not it. Where is it? <laughs> I love you. Top of the iceberg is the, is the daycare program. It's what everybody sees when they come into the building. And it's a great program. I mean, it gives these folks meaningful activity. They're engaged. They're treated with individual attention, dignity, compassion. They have a good time. It says on here, you've joined a choir. <laughs> you have joined the choir. And today, you're going to stand and sing a solo. It's a, it's a two-fold mission. One is to give the caregiver a much-needed break. The other is to have a safe, almost failure-free environment. Uh, Memory Matters works because we are a failure-free zone. And we have a very unique program that is tailored to the strengths, not the weaknesses, of our participants. At Memory Matters, the, the people who are uh, employees, volunteers, board members, they all do care about the people that they work with. Memory Matters would not work without our volunteers. They are the backbone of what we do. 
I learned something from the participants often, how they use color and, and uh, how loose they are in their painting. They actually put us on their schedules on a monthly basis, so they get to know all of our club members, and it works because it's not just a job, it's a passion. In one sentence, I get a lot more out of it than I could ever put in, for sure. It, it's just a very satisfying, happy, cheerful place to be. And I think that there is an attitude, an atmosphere of fun, an atmosphere of hope, an atmosphere of caring that you don't find in every organization. Um, but I think it's an important part of the recipe of what makes Memory Matters work. Uh, the other thing about our art classes is we have a lot of fun. It just relaxes us and gets us out of the box. Correct, guys? Yes. yes. The most wonderful thing that you will see in our program is that people do establish relationships. They will come in and say, Hey! They may not know the name, but they know the face, they know the smile, they know the handshake. Names, no, they, no one will come in and say, good morning, Richard. But they know the feeling of having a friend. Much of the work that we do is with individual families and counseling. And this room is called our Zen Den, and this is where we do one-on-one -on -one counseling. We have a lending library, and we meet with families in here that are generally in crisis. We want to educate our community about what we do, about the cause in general, and we want to be able to have other advocates in the community speaking out for families because they know who we are. So it's not just the work that they do on behalf of those who are afflicted and the caregivers who look after them, but also to inform policymakers and to inform those of us in the funding world about impacts, because without their knowledge, their expertise, their research, um, they're the experts and we do rely on them for that kind of information. One of our most unique programs is called Brain Boosters, and it's a proactive class for anybody in the community that's concerned about changes in their memory. I got the idea of Brain Boosters when I went to a conference. Then I just one day said, we're going to do Brain Boosters, and we started it. And it's been a huge success and, uh, and great fun to teach. Folks that are on the cusp of um, mild dementia or that just really have a lack of focus or stress in their lives yeah. and are experiencing memory, memory problems, this is a perfect class for them. It's a good lead or feeder into the daycare program as well. I can say the people that are committed for eight weeks will walk away with a better understanding of what memory loss is, uh, removing the myth about Alzheimer's, and recognizing if they do have a problem, they'll know what to do. We do a lot of crisis intervention work because these families are burned out, overwhelmed, desperate for help, and the first time that they reach out, they haven't built trust with us. So it's all about building trust with the families. What they need is a shoulder. They don't need someone giving them advice. They've already been told the diagnosis. They need support, and that's basically what we can provide for them. Our support groups are a safe and confidential venue for families to really get good information, good tools for their toolkit, but also to share their concerns, their grief, their anguish, and their unhappiness. Usually the mornings aren't as bad as this one was. It was just very difficult and uh, it's discouraging and I was not as calm as I was in the beginning because I kept saying to him, please, please, put your arm up, please, sit down, please, you know, and after a while you've said it so many times that you think, duh, go on. <laughs> so you had a little miscommunication going on yourself all, this morning. All morning. And I would say when I was trying to dress him, I would say, make a fist. He'd go, yeah. yeah, that's the hard thing of caregiving. You guys are having to relearn how to deal with someone who can't communicate, so your emotions are always there right on edge. Right. Yeah. You cannot reason right. nor argue with someone that has a brain that we say is impaired. Right. They have a physical disability. It's not just a memory issue, guys. 
I think one of the most <laughs> important world. things is understanding that you go live in their world. Their world. You can't force them to, I mean, to live in yours. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is that to remind yourself that when they do things that it's the disease and it's not them the that's person. doing it. Those two mm -hmm. things help me understand mm -hmm. more yeah. than anything going on. So the support groups really become a lifeline for these families. They connect with one another. They develop meaningful right. friendships. So tell me, what does this mean to you, a support group? Oh, I just love to come here because I love to share what's going on with our friends uh, that we've known for so long and we help each other. They have, in some cases, lost their best friend, their spouse, their soulmate. He doesn't know if I'm there or I'm not there. I can go away for eight days. He doesn't know I'm gone. And if I come home, he'll say, oh, there you are. We were very close, whereas the two of us were used yeah. to doing everything together, so it does get to be very lonely. They can't have a conversation that's Betty, meaningful anymore, Betty. and there's a, a huge what? sense of loss and grief and loneliness. He would always write me poetry. It came time for Valentine's Day, and on Valentine's Day he said, I can't write you this poem anymore. I can't write a poem. He knew he was having memory problems. So he thanked me for our years together and asked God to bless me the rest of our, our lives, you know. When Irish eyes are smiling, sure is like a morning spring. I always get this question, why do you do this? Why do you do this? You can hear the angels sing. And my answer to anyone who asks that is give it a try one day yourself and you will be hooked because working with elders and working with people that are so grateful just for your kindness is truly the most rewarding work I've ever done in my life. Sure, there's 